Hello everyone and welcome to another game from the FIDE Candidates Tournament 2020. It's Maxim Vachiel Lagrave versus the top uh, top seed of the tournament, Fabiano Corwana, former World Chess Championship challenger. And uh, a lot of us were interested to see how Maxim will do as he didn't have all that much time to prepare for the Candidates Tournament. Uh, he is a substitute for uh, Temur Rajabov. Uh, and uh, well, uh, let's, let's just see how it went. We do have some photos uh, before we show the actual game. Uh, here's a nice photo of Fabi. He arrived, uh, arrived early at the table. You can see uh, the the big chairs they are using, and uh, <laughs> uh, Grishuk for some reason again is using his uh, small chair. But we're gonna get to that. Uh, also, here is a nice uh, photo of the disinfectant they're using with the happy raccoon photo uh, image. Uh, and here's a nice photo of Maxime uh, applying this disinfectant before the actual handshake. I imagine they do it before and after the handshake. Uh, and uh, also here is their head-to-head -head, uh, score before this actual game occurred. So in classical games, Fabiano Corona beat Maxime Vachiola Graf 6-4 uh, with 22 draws. Uh, and if we include uh, rapid and exhibition games, uh, Maxim Vachiela Grav beat Fabiano Corona 21 to 12 with 32 draws. But okay, we do know that uh, uh, Maxim is uh, somewhat of a uh, speed specialist. As uh, I don't know if he's still rated. Uh, I don't know. He, him, Hikaru, and Magnus are constantly switching. Uh, who, who is the top rated blitz player in the world? Uh, but okay, that being said, uh, let's check it out. Maxime opens with e4. Uh, we have e5 by Fabi, knight of 3, knight to c6, and bishop to b5. Uh, Maxime goes for the real opus. Uh, we have a6, Morphe's defense, bishop to a4, and knight to f6 now. Uh, we have castles, and now b5. Bishop to b3, and now uh, bishop to b7, the Arhangel's uh, variation of the Rui Lopez. Uh, is something uh, that, that is very popular, but here Fabi goes for the modern Arhangelsk with bishop to c5. And it's interesting, the first time this was played was in uh, in a game between uh, Leventhal and Paul Morphy in uh, 1857 in London. Uh, but we're probably going to reach that game uh, when uh, during our Morphy saga. Uh, so re remember that. Uh, but yeah, the idea is that in normal Arhangelsk you want to go bishop to b7, but here you postpone developing the light square bishop, you go bishop c5, and then you will probably develop it to g4 if possible. Uh, but okay, with a4, uh, or, or wanting to open up the position as the rook is still undefended, and now rook to b8. Uh, we have c3, uh, we have d6, and now d4, uh, immediately attacking the center, bishop to b6, and now a5. A move we've uh, seen a couple of times uh, on this channel, and just in case uh, some of you don't remember, it's impossible to, to capture the pawn uh, with, with the bishop or the knight, because if bishop captures, then you can just kick away the defender of the bishop and you win the piece, but the main refutation is just captures, captures, you trade queens, captures, captures, and bishop to d5. You attack now the, the defender of the bishop and the knight is undefended, not much you can do here, captures, captures, and again you kick away the defender of the bishop, and it's even nicer. If bishop captures, seems like this is, uh, uh, sorry, if knight captures, seems like this is just uh, possible, but it's not because of rook captures on a5. Captures, and now you just trade everything. Captures, captures, captures with check, captures, and now uh, you get this, uh, uh, basically a fork festival, uh, where you're threatening knight f7, check to pick up the rook, you're threatening knight c6, check to pick up the other rook, also the bishop will get forked, and... Uh, well, it's just a much better position for white if you continue bishop b7. Let's say knight captures an f7 with check, you pick up the rook, yes, rook picks the, the knight back, and now e5. You get rid of your weak pawn, knight e4 and knight e2, you continue developing. You're up a pawn, very pleasant position for white. So, just uh, in case there are some new people on the channel who uh, are interested, why is a5 out of, uh, out of uh, you know, not on the table? So, bishop back to a7, and now comes h3, not allowing, of course, bishop to g4, since this was black's idea. We have castles by Fabi, and now bishop to e3. Uh, and okay, e captures on d4, c captures on d4, and knight to b4 now, uh, preparing to strike in the center with c5 at some point. Uh, we have knight to c3 and bishop to b7. So the bishop finally gets developed uh, to, to the b7, uh, b7, h1 diagonal. Uh, we have knight to g5. Now, 
And here uh, the position has been reached uh, a few times. Uh, there's pressure on the f7 pawn, so you kind of prevent rook to e8. Uh, and uh, you might have some ideas of bringing the queen into the game, maybe something uh, something along these lines. Uh, and uh, c5 and queen to e8 are known moves in the position. But here Fabi goes for queen to e7. It is a new move in the position, and already as a move 15, we have a completely new game. So let's see what Maxim, uh, uh, Maxim does here. He continues with e5. Uh, makes sense. We have D captures on E5, and now we reach the position from the thumbnail. Here, Maxim goes for it. Knight captures on F7, and it's very interesting. You're thinking, okay, but why would you give two pieces for a rook? The problem is you wouldn't. If rook captures, bishop captures with check, uh, you just pick up the queen back. The problem is after this idea, uh, you're gonna go D captures on E5. You're not gonna capture the rook, and now uh, you open up an attack towards the knight and also the undefended bishop on a7. So after bishop captures on e3, e captures on f6 comes with an attack on the queen, uh, g captures and now f captures on e3. It will, it, it will be a much better position for white. Uh, rook, uh, you're gonna bring the rook to f8, but now bishop captures on f7, rook captures and e4, uh, just a much better position for white. And of course, you're up the exchange. So after knight captures an e7, Fabi instantly plays e4, showing that this is all well within his preparation. And now you have this position where, uh, which you usually don't see in a game between two super grandmasters, that a white has a free discovery. Like uh, imagine having this against Fabi and not having a decent discovery. So any any uh, jump with the knight uh, does just doesn't do all that much. Uh, so here, you uh, basically you want to consider something like knight g5, king here, and then shifting your knight over to e6, where you will have a very strong knight, but with black's control of the d5 square, uh, at some point black will just block it and you will have to move it, uh, so that doesn't really do all that much. So instead, Maxim goes for knight to d6 check, he wants to uh, d uh, eliminate the light square bishop, King h8 and now knight captures on b7. We have rook captures on b7 and queen to e2 now. Continuing development. Uh, and uh, of course, if uh, if d5 or something is played at some point, you might also be able to, to capture back with the queen. So c6, uh, taking control of the d5 square uh, even further, and also now the rook can get into the game. We have rook a to d1 by Maxim, and now rook to d7. Uh, also, there was uh, there was talk of bishop to b8. Seems very strong, as you will put a lot of pressure on the uh, white king's position. However, g3 will will be played, and it does look like a weak weakening uh, but Fabi as he is familiar with the with the situation and the position probably knows that g3 uh, although although it is a weakening for white uh, doesn't yield uh, any any results for black so he continues rook to d7 uh, and now comes f3 uh, deciding to get rid of this uh, rid of this pawn in the center e captures on f3 rook captures on f3 now uh, 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 gaining additional support for the bishop uh, and c5 now uh, finally uh, executing that move. Uh, so d captures on c5, rook captures on d1 with check, knight captures and now, uh, sorry, knight captures on d1 uh, and bishop captures on c5. Uh, we have queen to f2, you have to unpin, uh, otherwise you, you might run into some, some problems here. So queen to f2 and now avoiding the trade, bishop to d6. And again, uh, black is always ready to, to put some pressure uh, on, on uh, white's uh, h2 square and if that happens, g3 will have to be played at some point. So knight to c3, uh, of course you, you want to get the knight back into the game, and now knight to d3, putting pressure on the queen but also on the b2 pawn. And here the situation on the clock is 35 minutes for Maxime uh, and uh, 58 minutes for Fabi. So Fabi of course uh, uh, was prepared much better, but uh, after they deviated from the known lines, of course he started wasting time as well. Uh, and uh, if instead of knight d3 you go for let's say queen e5 immediately, uh, then bishop to f4 just kicks the queen back, so it's not a problem. Queen c5, you, you offer a queen trade, bishop captures on d6, no queen trade for you. And the game continues. So instead knight to d3 by Maxime, uh, sorry by Fabi, uh, and queen back to e2 now. Uh, and uh, now, now it's uh, it's a question. If Maxim goes back, would would you go back Queen F2? Uh, so let's say Knight to C5, which is played in the game, but now Bishop to A2. Fabi just uh, brings the Bishop back. Uh, sorry, Maxim. Uh, we have Rook to E8 now starting to pile up on the Bishop here, but Queen to D2, of course, getting out of the way, and Knight C to E4. 
uh, offering a knight trade. We have knight captures, knight captures, and now queen to d3, getting the queen out of the way. Uh, and knight to g5 now, uh, attacking the rook, uh, offering a trade. And uh, here, uh, rook to f5 uh, is an option, but it's it, it's a very complicated one. For example, if rook to f5, you might run into ideas like knight captures on h3, and then uh, who knows who knows what can happen if you go here, captures on e3 with check, captures captures, and it's uh, well you are up a pawn, but it's a uh, it's an uh, endgame of op bishops of opposite colors, so. Uh, not something you want to go into. So instead of f5, not allowing this idea, uh, you go for bishop captures on g5, and now, of course, not capturing and allowing queen captures on d6, you go for bishop to c5 check first. King to h1, and now comes queen captures on g5. Uh, we have rook back to f1, uh, and queen to e5. Again, Maxim with ideas of putting pressure on the, on the white king here. And uh, if you allow this bishop to d6 move, white will have to play g3, and then it's just bad for white. So queen to d5, offering a queen trade, but queen to e2. Of course, Fabi declines it. We have queen to f5 now, defending the rook, and also keeping an eye on the f8 square while attacking the bishop. So if you're not careful, you might run into a back rank mate, like, like this one. So after queen to f5, we have queen to e5, again offering a trade, and here Fabi uh, uh, Maxim decides that there is no uh, more, uh, th there is no good way to, uh, to uh, look for chances here. So he decides to trade. Queen captures, rook captures, and rook to d1. Now going for rook to d8, but g6, of course, now just making room for the king. Bishop to d5, uh, making a uh, move 40, so time control has been reached, and now rook to e7, not allowing bishop to b7. Bishop to c6, uh, now with ideas of, of uh, bringing the rook up into the game, and if you trade rooks, then you will be able to gobble up the pawns on the light squares. So rook to e2, going after the pawn on b2. And now bishop to b7, they decide to trade everything out. Rook captures, bishop captures, rook a2, bishop captures, and rook captures on a5. And it was in this position on move 44 that Maxim Vashiela Grav and Fabiano Caruana agreed to a draw. So round one uh, of the candidates tournament 2020 uh, ends in a draw uh, for, for the two of them. So really exciting game, a good preparation by, by both of them, uh, and a very exciting line al allowing that knight captures on f7 and then just e4, really, really exciting stuff. Uh, so uh, we can we can expect uh, a lot of interesting games, uh, but uh, w w the games that I'm extremely looking forward to are the games where Maxim has the black pieces, where we're gonna see the Grunfeld, the Nidorf, and whatever he, uh, who knows what what else he prepared for for the candidates tournament. Uh, but yeah, that being said, these are the standings after round one of the candidates tournament 2020, uh, and also you can see the average rating of the tournament is 2774, so definitely a strong tournament. Uh, with one point, uh, the only uh, people who scored wins are Yanni Pomnishi and Van Gaal, uh, who defeated Anish Giri and Ding Liren. Uh, then with half a point, Fabiano Coruana, Alexander Gishchuk, Maxim Vashelagrav and uh, Kirill Alexenko. And uh, with zero points due to their losses, Ding Liren and Anish Giri. So very exciting stuff. Uh, today we're continuing with round two. Uh, that's the game. Uh, I do hope you enjoyed it. Uh, I would like to thank uh, Federico Tangochi for your contribution to my channel. Thank you a lot. I really appreciate it. As usual, you can check two of my previous videos here. Thank you all for watching and I will see you soon continuing the coverage of the candidates uh, for as long as, as it lasts. Uh, so thank you all. I will see you soon and have an excellent rest of your day. We're continuing with round two today.